Hey everybody, Adam Wilbur here. Thanks so much for being here with me. I do appreciate your time. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. It'll be a TEDx talk, but not one of mine. It's actually of a very good friend and a mentor of mine. His name's Andrew Bennett. His talk is called The Magic of Words. It's raw, it's real, it's awesome. You're gonna love it as much as I do. If you wanna learn more about Andrew, which I highly recommend you do, you can go to the first link in the description. That'll take you to his website where you can see all of his talks and basically what he's about. He's an awesome human and I think you'll see that through this talk. This talk has almost 500,000 views on YouTube at this point. He was kind enough to let me share it here on this channel with you guys. Let's dive right into my good friend, Andrew Bennett's talk, The Magic of Words. a magician for over 45 years. When I was 23 years old, I met former U.S. presidential candidate Ross Perot, and I ended up working for him for 10 years. Ross made me promise that I'd figure out a way to integrate magic and business, and I've been working at that for the last 30 years. So tonight I'm here to share with you one of the greatest secrets that I discovered on that 30-year journey. Tonight, we're going to pull back the curtain, and I'm going to share with you one of magic's greatest secrets. This is so secret that most magicians don't know it. This is a real treasure to me, and when I first discovered it, I didn't want to share it with anyone, seriously. I wanted to keep it for myself. But it had such a big impact on my life. And as I started to share it with other people, people were telling me how it was impacting them. And so it's clearly one of those ideas worth sharing. So that's why I'm here tonight. The secret is a magic word that has transformational power. In fact, it's the universal magic word, and you all know it. What's the universal magic word? Abracadabra. <laughs> Please is a very good magic word. <laughs> and thank you. So I never used the word abracadabra in my magic performances. I thought it was goofy. I thought it was just some nonsense word. But one day I was sitting and I was reflecting and I thought, where does abracadabra come from and what does it mean? And so I started to do some research, and it led me to the uh, Department of Linguistics at MIT. I sent an email. I had a follow-up phone conversation. A couple days later, one of the faculty called and said, you aren't going to believe this. Abracadabra is an Aramaic word. I said, what's Aramaic? He said, Aramaic is an ancient sacred language that predates Hebrew. Some people say Aramaic is the language that Jesus spoke. But he said, hold on, because you're never going to believe what abracadabra means. It means what I speak is what I create. What I speak is what I create. Let me give you an example of abracadabra in action. We're going to start, what I speak is what I create. We have to begin with words. So we're going to take a simple word the word ball. And let's just add another word. The word bowling. Abra Cadabra. <laughs> Truly, what I speak is what I create. <laughs> Words are one of our most powerful sources of creative power. Words can ignite a movement. Words can inspire us to rise above adversity. Words can connect our hearts. On the other hand, words can destroy creativity. 
Words can take us down a rat hole of self-doubt. And words can destroy relationships. We all know how powerful words are. And yet, it's scary how little attention we pay to our words. We don't realize how powerful our words are in terms of influencing the results that we're getting in life. Words are so powerful. And so tonight, I'm going to equip you by using this idea of abracadabra to use your words more consciously so that you can move toward what you want to create, so that you can become more collaborative, more innovative, more creative, you can look at obstacles in different ways, and so that you can transform your life, your relationship, your teams, your workplace. Abracadabra is a powerful tool for doing this. I want you to think about your words in, in two ways, creative or limiting. Are your words creative? Are they uplifting? Are they inspiring? Are they generative? Or are they negative? Are they destructive? Are they demoralizing? Now, just understanding this distinction between creative and limiting can be a really powerful tool for you. It may sound really elementary, but just being conscious, are my words, are the words that I'm using right now moving me towards what I want, or are they moving me towards what I don't want? And just by being conscious, you can do kind of an abracadabra on yourself and say, wait a minute, what I speak is what I create. I want to be using words that are moving me towards what I want to create. So let's look at this idea of abracadabra uh, on three levels. We'll look at it on a personal level, on an interpersonal level, and from a leadership perspective. First, the personal level. Raise your hand if you talk to yourself. Now, you, you hesitated for a moment. I, I kind of saw you look up, and that leads me to believe you were thinking, do I talk to myself? <laughs> of course you do. We all do. We all talk to ourselves. We have this constant churning, constant stream of thought going. And if you don't believe me, just try meditating. You get quiet, you close your eyes, and immediately it starts. Did I leave the coffee maker on? It starts. And we just have that constant stream going on. In the uh, world of magic, the magician's script is called patter, and it's carefully designed words that influence what you believe and what you see. And that internal patter that we all have going on is similar. It's there to influence what we believe and what we see and consequently what we end up creating in life. Let me tell you a, a story about that internal patter. When I was a kid growing up practicing magic in our farmhouse in the basement in Michigan, I learned about an organization called the Magic Circle in London. The Magic Circle is the oldest society of magicians in the world. And I set a goal at age 14 to become a member. 25 years later, I was invited. Now to become a member, you have to pass an audition in front of 140 of the best magicians in the world who know how you're doing what you're doing. Very intimidating. And so about two weeks before my audition, I was doing a workshop for uh, a company in Chicago. And it was a two-day workshop. It was about 100 people. And I thought, this is a perfect opportunity for me to rehearse for my audition. So first day, I step out in front of the group, and I start to perform a trick, and I screw it up royally. I mean, so bad that people in the audience were going, oh, so that's how you do that. (laughs) 
And it shook me up a little bit, but I just, you know, rolled with it and went on with the workshop. Day two, I stepped out again, different trick, started to perform it, and I failed again. Now, I was really shaken up this time. It was two weeks before the audition of my life, and I had failed at two magic tricks that I'd performed my entire life for, for decades. So I was so shaken, I stepped aside, and I asked one of my colleagues to step in for me. He gets up in front of the group, and in front of 100 people, he looks over at me and he says, what's going on with you? I've never seen you fail at a trick. And I was very humbled by having failed, and I took his question to heart, and I just thought for a moment. And I realized, and I announced it to everyone, I said, I don't believe I'm good enough to become a member of the Magic Circle. And my friend lovingly looked over at me and he said, abracadabra, what you speak is what you create. I had this script running in my head that was so powerful it worked its way out of my head and into my hands. And so I set to work rewiring my brain. I spent the next two weeks, every morning I'd take 20 minutes and I'd sit and I would write a first person accounting of what my audition was going to look like, what it was going to feel like, and it was all as positive as it could be. You know, I can feel the energy from the group. They want me to succeed, that kind of thing. I did that every day for two weeks. I went to London. I did my audition, and I'm happy to say that I've been a member of the Magic Circle for the last 14 years. Thank you. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> and so, you know, skills and knowledge are required. But oftentimes they're not sufficient. Oftentimes it's the inner game that gets in the way. You still have to have the skills and the knowledge. But sometimes what we have going on up here works its way out. And what we speak is what we create. Now, that story points out another uh, aspect of abracadabra, and that's using it on an interpersonal level. My friend, by simply saying abracadabra, what you speak is what you create, made me awake. And it was something I had been blind to. Suddenly, thanks to a friend, I was aware of it. And that's what we can do for each other. Think about if you had that kind of relationship with people at work where we would help each other o overcome these kind of self-limiting words and thoughts that we tend to use. My wife, Jennifer, uh, created these wristbands. And they say, abracadabra, what I speak is what I create. And I wear mine all the time, and I'll be looking, I'll be working, and I'll look down, and I'll notice it. And it's a chance for me to, to just kind of check. I took the first quarter of this year, and I'm writing a book, so I would write every morning. And there was a morning where I was writing, and I was stuck, kind of the classic writer's block. And I looked down, and I saw my abracadabra wristband. And I just paused, and I thought, okay, what am I running in my head right now? And I realized that I had this belief that I don't have anything worthwhile that anyone wants to hear. And I just thought, that's not getting me towards what I want to get. And I just did a quick shift. Jennifer and I use it at home with each other. One of us will go down a rat hole, and uh, the other one will, will say, abracadabra. And it's just lighthearted. It's quick. It's fun. It's easy. It doesn't take years of therapy. It's just quick like that. Jennifer tells me that I'm rather condescending when I use it. You know, <laughs> abracadabra. <laughs> and so that, that interpersonal kind of helping each other, Jennifer and I um, work with a, a, an amazing organization in Alexandria, Virginia called the Friends of Guest House. And Guest House is a home for women coming out of prison. 
they go there, they stay for two or three months, and they find housing, they get jobs, they get their support communities established. Women who are coming out of prison have a 70% chance of going back to prison. Women who go through the guest house program, 7%. It's an amazingly effective program. And so we do workshops once a quarter with the women, and one of the things that we help them with is understanding the influence that your words have on your outcomes. And so we were at a social event. A bunch of us were standing around, and a young woman comes up. One of the, one of, they call them guests because it's guest house. One of the guests came up to us, and she said, you know, I'm taking my GED for the third time tomorrow. I'll probably fail it again. And one of her housemates reached over, because this young woman was wearing her abracadabra wristband, and her housemate reaches over and she snaps it, and she says, abracadabra, honey, what you speak is what you create. And this young woman's eyes got really big, and she said, oh, yeah. You know, I've been studying a lot. I will pass this time. And she did. What she spoke is what she created. On a leadership level, words are so critical because leaders, I think, want, in my experience, I've been working with organizations going through transformation for the last 30 years. That's what I do. I use magic to teach leadership and help people shape really positive organizational cultures. And as I've worked with leaders, one of the most important things I've come to understand is that, that a leader, a great leader, creates hope. And one of the ways that they do that is they tell a story that's inspiring about where the organization is going. And they enable people to understand their role in the story, where they fit in, how their contribution is helping us create this amazing future. If you're a leader and your people don't understand and aren't inspired about where you're going and they don't see their place in it, then you're not leading. Jack Dorsey is one of the co-founders of Twitter and the current CEO of Square. You know the mobile device that you swipe credit cards? He says that one of his primary jobs is to be the editor-in-chief of the Square story. He's the steward of moving that story forward in such a way that people are inspired by it and that they feel connected to it. So, in closing, I want to give you some action steps for putting abracadabra to work. First of all, just simply be aware. Are the words you're using, are they creative or are they limiting? Just be aware. Second, monitor your internal language as well as your external language. Use abracadabra as a quick tool to notice when you're not using words that are moving you towards the future you want to create, and just abracadabra, make a shift. Fourth, when you see results that aren't the results that you want, just do a little reflection, do a little examination under the surface, and consider whether or not the words that you're running, the patter that's going on, maybe is getting in the way. And last, journal about what it is that you're trying to create. Do like I did with the Magic Circle audition. Write about what the future looks like in vivid detail. Write about it until it makes you smile. That's kind of a test. So in closing, I want to leave you with one word. And that word is prosperity. Prosperity comes from Latin, two words meaning pro, spera. It means toward hope. By choosing your words carefully, the words you use with yourself and with others, you can move toward hope. And I say that with a final abracadabra.